Hi, welcome to Mama Miller's Bakery. Um, I have a recipe today uh, that I'd like to share with you that was one of my Grandma Greer's recipes. This is not a pie that she made for us when she visited, but um, after she passed, one of the things that I took home with me was her recipes, all of her handwritten recipes. So this is a really easy recipe that I feel like uh, all of y'all would enjoy making. It's a very rich recipe that is delicious with ice cream on top. So if this is something that interests you, we'd like to share more recipes with you. So just let us know if this is something you'd like to see. Okay, my grandma came to see us every year during the holidays as long as her health let her. Uh, she was the one that made Christmas at our house. And she's the one that made me understand how people's love language can be cooking for people. Uh, when she came, as soon as she got off the plane and got to our home, she was, had a turkey in the oven, a ham in the oven, casseroles in the oven, sweet potato pie, and she spent her whole time cooking for us. And being younger, I didn't really appreciate it as much as I should have at the time. And now that I'm older and I'm a grandma, I understand how cooking for people shows your love for them. So uh, this, this recipe, again, it's, it's one of hers, and um, I hope y'all enjoy it. Uh, we're fixing to get started on a recipe. One thing you do before you start a recipe is read the directions all the way through. A lot of recipes will have ingredients that go on after you make the recipe or just different little things, so that'll save you from making some mistakes. Also, get your oven preheated and ready to go before you get started. Just gotten out my mixer and my bowl and the vanilla. I'm gonna head to the microwave and get my half cup of butter. Um, anytime you make a recipe, always follow the directions. Like this one uh, is a half a cup of butter melted. Some recipes call for it to be softened, some melted, but you need to follow the recipe on that. We're ready to get started now. Um, I've got my bowl ready. I've got some vanilla out, my, my mixer out. Um, I'm gonna add a cup of sugar. I've got my sugar down here. And I just use, it's just regular white sugar. So add a cup of that. And then I'm going to add a half a cup of flour. My pocket's empty. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to get my flour. A half a cup. Now, I keep, usually when I'm cooking, I'll keep a like a trash bowl just to keep things neat and clean so you'll have a place to put your trash. Um, the next thing that I'm going to put in is two eggs and I'm going to grab those out of the fridge. So we're going to crack the eggs. Just add those. And then we're going to put just a teaspoon of vanilla. Use whatever kind of vanilla that you like. This is a Mexican vanilla but you don't have to use that. You can use whatever kind you like. So just a teaspoon of this. Okay. And that's literally the base of the pie. So now we are gonna plug in our mixer and just mix it up real quick. It's kind of like a cookie dough. Okay. Let me grab a spatula real quick. Anytime you're cooking too, like always use a spatula to scrape down the sides of your bowl. That way you make sure that it, all your ingredients get incorporated in there. Okay, mix it up just a minute longer. Okay. So your dough's gonna be pretty runny at this point. It's just gonna kinda have this consistency. Now, we get to put, we're gonna put in some chopped walnuts, some chocolate chips, and butterscotch chips. So I've just got these ready ahead of time because I knew we were gonna be baking. So you don't have to do that. And the recipe calls for these type of chocolate chips. Anytime on things like this, if you wanted, like if you didn't like butterscotch, you could add peanut butter. If you didn't wanna do the semi-sweet chocolate, you could add milk chocolate. Um, some people don't like walnuts, so you could use pecan, so feel free to kinda change some of the things for your family's taste. Okay. So, I wrapped them really good. <laughs> so you literally just pour your chocolate chips. This is a half a cup of the walnuts. And then these are the butterscotch chips. Okay. 
Now, we're just gonna mix in the chips. So again, once you kind of get the batter all together, it pretty much resembles a, almost like a thin cookie dough. All right. Let's go around it one time with the spatula. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my prepared pie shell. Um, pie, pie crust scares some people and don't let it scare you off from making pies. You can buy frozen pie shells, you can buy roll out pie shells, or you can make them homemade like we do. There are all kinds of recipes out there for pie crust. So just, you could find one, there's butter, some use Crisco, just uh, you could find one and try to make it pretty much with pie crust. If you'll follow the directions, you'll usually have pretty good results. So don't be afraid to make your own pie crust. So, but I'm gonna get mine out of the fridge real quick. So this is our pie crust that we made this morning. I'm not getting along with saran wrap today. Okay, so. This is just a regular nine inch pie pan. And this is just a foil disposable. If you're making it at home, of course you could get a nicer pie pan, something for the holidays. Okay, the consistency on your pie, it's, it's really thick. So it's something different than what you're kind of used to for most pies. So, but that's, that's what it's gonna look like. So I'm just gonna spoon it into my shell and just kind of press it in there and make sure that you get it kind of evenly spread out. This pie is a really dense pie, so it bakes at 325. Um, and this one bakes for an hour or until it's set. Uh, all ovens are kind of different, so you just have to, like when you're baking a pie, especially one like this, so like after it's been in an hour, just kind of take your pie and shake it, and if the center is set, then you know you're okay. So we're gonna pop this pie in the oven, and we'll check it in about an hour. Okay, now we just have to clean up the mess and wait for it to bake. Our timer went off, so we're gonna give our pie a check. Oh yeah, it looks good, nice and brown. So there you go, and it, you want it set on the inside. Since our pie has had time to cool, I thought I'd slice it so y'all could kind of see what it looks like. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, I'm gonna slice it up. And this pie's good all year round, but it is really a rich dessert to have at Thanksgiving and Christmas. When we slice pies here, we normally slice them like in slices of six, but normal people slice them, you could get eight. So I'm just gonna slice this up, since it's such a rich dessert. <laughs> it just hit me in the face. So there's your pie. Would you look at that? It is just honestly like a giant cookie, so. Hope y'all enjoy the recipe that we've shared with you. Okay, again, just remember, like on recipes like this, you can change some of the flavors up to where your family enjoys it, but we made it with the butterscotch and the chocolate chips and walnuts like Grandma wrote the recipe. So uh, you enjoy it with your family. And again, let me know if y'all would like to have more recipes from um, my grandma or things that we've used up here, and we'd love to share them with you. Follow me on Instagram, just look for Miller's Baked Goods. Thank you.